All right, Rachel, you ready? I am ready. All right, let's put live. Let's put some massive blab on all the trolls. I love it. All right, we are live. Welcome to uh, Social Business Hour. It is November 2nd. Uh, we are starting a new month, and we do this show every single week, every single Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific. I am co-host Brian Fanzo, Brown High School fan. Twitter's uh, in New York State. I'm joined, as always, every single week by my co-host, Miss Rachel Miller. How are you today, Rachel? I am awesome. Love Mondays. Love new months. This is an especially wonderful month because it's my birthday month. So let's get started. Sounds good. So, um, you know, for all those that are tuning in, we started back in June uh, doing a themed month or July, um, and we were doing each month, we did a theme rather than, you know, we've been doing this show for almost two years, and we're really trying to focus the conversation around one theme. And uh, for those that are joining, you know, we use the hashtag SBizHour on the Twitters. Our amazing community manager who is on here, if you watched our pre-show, is in the comment section here on Blab as well as on the Twitters. So we'll post the comments out, um, throughout the, put the questions for each one of our uh, our questions throughout the hour on both Twitter and here on Blab. And if you would tell a little bird up there in the corner or that corner, whichever corner is reversed here on Blab, um, and let the, let the Twitter audience know, we'll also change the topic as the conversation goes. But today's and this month, November, it's thank you month. It's Rachel Miller's birthday month. Um, and it's a new month. And really what we decided to do is, you know, in my opinion, probably the most important and the coolest month of our two years of doing this show um, will be this month. And we're going to focus the entire month on um, education and uh, creating actions around understanding and, and online harassment. And I think that's really what we're all about here. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for telling a little bird. Thank you guys for joining this movement. I think we can really make a difference. And this community is amazing. We thank you guys every single day. What I hope though, is that this community goes beyond just tweeting and showing up every, every hour. I think we, we, we focus on taking action as a group, and uh, I'm excited about that. So, Rachel, I know you've done a lot more research than I have. This is something you've really been um, kind of into. So I guess maybe before even the question one, or you can throw out question one, I would love to hear kind of your take on it, and then let's, let's, let's get it, because I, I agree, Jed. It's yeah, so I guess before we start, uh, because this is such a weighty topic, there's a lot to discuss, there's a lot of nuances, um, we do have a lot of cool guests lined up, including our friend, Ms. Jackson, who's here in the stream today. Um, so we're going to kind of take a very staggered approach today. We're going to focus on just like the main types of online harassment, kind of discuss what they are so you can identify them and how you should combat them. Um, and then uh, trolls, because I think trolls is probably uh, the most common that we see, especially on social media. I mean, online harassment itself is quite vast where, you know, it, it everything, anything internet, email related, um, but trolls uh, will probably just focus just on social trolls because those are the ones we see in our stream every day. Um, and just kind of how there's two main types um, and again, how to best combat them. Because again, we want this to be very actionable um, and together make a difference. Nothing changes if we all just look the other way. So the really good goal of this month is to you know, really stand up and um, put an end or at least put an end in action, you know, just put the in motion for um, ending online harassment. I, I couldn't that agree being more. Said, I Tink, did we drop question one? Um, we're kind of going to start again. This is high level today. So, question one is who is responsible for policing online behavior? And I'll, I'll ask you, Mr. Fanzo. All right. So hopefully my internet signal isn't horrible because for some reason I was going in and out there for a hot minute. But, um, you know, for me, I think part of this is um, I, I did a keynote at Periscope Summit. We are greater than me. And I, I firmly believe that. to drive uh, to amplifying is about rallying together. So I would say, in my opinion, who's rep responsible for it? It's as much the um, the person that's being harassed as the community and those that believe in the greater good. So for me, I believe not only in self-policing, but I think in community policy where you know we are blocking and helping and inspiring and motivating. And if someone's being attacked or being trolled, being able to reach out to them and letting them know that people are here for them and it's not a, a one-time event and you're not alone. I think that is how we drive change. If we put the onus only on that one person 
or one form or one group, I believe it becomes a siloed effort and we don't drive major change with siloed efforts. We drive major change. And I say this all the time and I, and I think it's never been more important here. The future of business is community. The future of marketing is social good. And I believe to make those two things happen, we have to help each other be better and improve the value that people can gain online. So that's kind of where I focus on this completely. No, I completely agree. I think, you know, I'm a big advocate for policing yourself. Um, I think you are truly responsible for um, how you behave online. You set your own precedence. Um, and then again, how you respond to negative behavior online, that's up to you. Um, but again, it is it's, it's community for sure. Um, and if we all band together um, and agree to make a change, it will happen. Well, and, you know, and I want to bring in um, uh, uh, Jim put on over here. He said, who will guard the guards? Better for the community to make trolling socially acceptable. I agree. I don't believe that it's a hierarchy. I believe it's a community effort. So I don't think of any one person having more responsibility or less responsibility. I believe together, if we're each doing our part, there isn't a single point of failure. And there's also the elements where, you know, no matter what your role is, no matter what level of leadership, visibility, amplification, influence, or whatever your level is, I don't care what your level is. I believe we all have the, the ability and the onus to make a difference. And if we're all rallying behind each other, there isn't a target. Because I think part of the things with trolls and part of the things are is trolls are cowards they are cowards who hide behind the 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 uh the ability of a keyboard or the internet or the fact that they believe that they're empowered by their anonymity and the fact that they can they can you know kind of attack without little recourse i believe the recourse ends up happening because we are all together rallying against them therefore their their sound and their power is almost mitigated but if we are all not doing it if there are weak spots if there are vulnerabilities i believe that continues to empower the trolls and all it really takes is one person and one movement to allow that to continue no i agree and i think we all get kind of lazy and I, even i think the whole everyone gets so fired up about direct messages so this is a kind of a slightly off topic example but everyone's like we, you know nobody likes them but nobody is telling the people sending them that they don't like them you either block that person or you delete it, but you don't actively take a step to let that person know that you don't like their behavior. So they keep going and they will keep flooding your inbox unless you actually do something. And I think that's kind of like the core of what we're talking about here. Like, don't just like, oh, that was horrible and delete it or block it because that person will continue to do it. You have to stand up, say something, and maybe the person will listen and make a change. I mean, there's, there's, there's those trolls who are just going to keep trolling because, like you said, they have nothing to do. They just want to be a nuisance. But there's also those people who are generally trying to be malicious to you personally or to your community. And either way, you need to do something, act on it. Don't just you know internalize it because nobody can read your mind. Well, I think that's part of the, the idea. If you're empowered by the community and you know you're not alone and you know that you can rally together, it almost infuses you to not only share your experiences, but help educate the masses. I think right now it's very much in the sense where you're afraid to educate the masses because you are afraid. You are. And to me, that's part of this education. It's part of our month. That's why we're focusing on this is it's letting people know that we are here for you. Maybe you're not exposed to her. Maybe, you know, I, I talk about it all the time. To me, I didn't understand the gravity of it, living on a platform that I love. Um, I'm here in New York speaking at the, uh, about Periscope. It's, a, it's something that I love, I believe in, but I was open, my eyes were open when I, I was at a panel at the community summit and blown away at not only the trolling, but the negativity and the level of, uh, at, a, at a whole new level. And to me, I felt really bad because I'm not getting trolled, but I was unaware. And the fact that I was unaware, I was not helping, therefore I was hurting. And that's kind of how I look at it there. You know, I saw um, our, our friends over there at Iographer had jumped in the comment section as well, talking about, you know, giving the community great support. I also think the onus kind of goes on some of these platforms and mobile uh, apps. I think the ability to put in parameters, filters, and what I like to call, put in the options to allow us to help self-garden or self-govern by using things like, you know, I talk about on live streaming. I say, hey, we need a PG-13 button, which filters out the worst five words and maybe someone that's been blocked 10% of the by their audience. And then that, that at least give a, uh, the option some printers, but it also says a sign that we are willing to help you fight it. Because I believe forums and audiences that say, hey, it's the, it's the, we, we have to give freedom of speech. No, freedom of speech is one thing. Freedom of hate and freedom of attacking and freedom of someone being able to, to, to really be a, a threat on someone is to me is way over the line. And we are way far in technology and in our world today to really put our hands up and say, hey, we don't want to even have to get our, our fingers 
players in the ring. And that's really my opinion. I, I know that's special in some senses because some people still believe that it's it should be a wild, wild west. I'm all about freedom of speech. I'm all about unfiltered turkey. But I'm also about give me the uh, options and the ability as a user, a consumer, to put some of these filters in place. Don't force them. Don't block it across the board. But give me the options so that I can at least decide what matters to me. Exactly. It's all about personalization. And what I find offensive is different to what you find offensive. And you can't tell me the technology is not out there because I know I use tools like Manage, Flutter, Tweepy all the time. And I can search for tweets for new people to follow and I can exclude certain words and hashtags and phrases. So it's out there from when I'm, you know, segmenting my stream, but be able to do that across a platform would be awesome. And every and even for take it to a brand level for social listening. Again, if you're a skate brand, there are certain terms that you want people to say, but if you're, you know, at perhaps a children's boutique, those words are incredibly offensive to your community versus another brand. So you should be able to filter out that noise more effectively. And I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to multitask here with one screen. Everybody knows how I work. I'm a three, I'm a three screen guy, so I'm on my one lab top here at an event so i was looking at their feed and the twitter feed's blowing up on the, around this conversation of really what um not only what the responsibility is but our friend mitch jackson who will be a guest later this month um was talking about really the terms of service agreements trump freedom of speech agreements which I, it's, it, like spot on that's why mitch jackson's gonna be on our show um because it's really a little bit of comes into that education as well because let's be honest I don't. I wouldn't claim to be an expert. I worked cybersecurity for nine years. I am in no sense an expert in understanding terms of service and security agreements and a lot of these things. But I, I, I am. I've, I've implemented in Mothers Against Drunk Driving. I helped implement implement a forum filter because, it, as crazy as it sounds, against drunk driving had an amazing amount of trolls. People were literally going at mothers that had had either their son was or, mo or daughter had drunk and killed somebody and they were coming in there and these people attacking them as horrible people and bad mothers and the only reason your, your son or daughter drunk was drinking and driving is because you were a bad parent grow, um, having them grow up and the ability to that, to make social good and drive major change was really limited because of this, this negativity nastiness that people felt and by putting these filters in place I can tell you the value of that community drastically changed the day we turned that filter on it was it was a it was a transition that opened my eyes and said, we need a, we need to team up as a community. But we also have to embrace the filters and the ability to leverage some of the technology as well. Completely agree. Um, so to kind of, to lead, as a lead into question two, I did a lot of reading over the last uh, couple of weeks for this uh, topic for this month. And I like to kind of simplify it for you guys. So I was gonna break down online harassment into four main types, but anybody, if I missed one, um, speak up and we will definitely add it. So for me, there's hateful behavior, just being you know truly negative and hateful towards an individual or an, you know, an ethnic group or in religion across the board, hateful behavior. Obviously there's sexual. Um, plagiarism is lesser known, but is running rampant on social media. Um, and then there's also the just blatantly stealing of someone's identity, which um, whether it's, you know, credit card or online fraud, that one um, you do hear about in the news more often than others. Um, so, Brian, are there any other types of online that you want to add to that list? Well, you know, I, I always think of, and I don't know if it's adding to the list or really kind of defining it in the idea, where I think bull bullying from the place of power. And power is an interesting concept because I don't think power is actually something that's like deemed upon you. You don't have power because someone like casted a magic wand. But I believe in the idea where people are actually leveraging either their their social clout, their their um, their resume, their their uh, build, their work relationship with you, maybe even their their initial relationship and engagement with you, where they know that you need something from them. Therefore, they feel that they're in a power position and therefore are able to pay or influence someone to do things because of that power position. So that's something for me. I don't know what, I mean, do you think, does that, that fit under one of those or is that kind of a, uh, kind of a? I think that, well, it kind of falls into hateful behavior because people are just kind of, you know, using their their clout or their, their size against to put somebody else down. Um, but again, it could be its own category. All right, let's throw our question two. I, I don't have the question thing up because for some reason Google Hangouts won't, or Google Docs won't load for me. So you throw out question two? Yeah, question two is online harassment, as we just stated, is more than just hateful speech. Uh, and what type is most offensive to you personally? 
Um, so, and I'll break that even to, into another segue. So what's most offensive to you and what do you think is most offensive to society as a whole? Because I think that kind of plays into the greater discussion of the month. All right, so I answered question one first. I'll let you take that one first. I'm, I'm actually torn because I see, obviously, there are huge downsides to all of these. Um, but as a, as a woman, and I do know I did a lot of research and that it really pained me to see that one in 25 women um, have been sexually harassed online. So I think that's like a huge number uh, or 25%, so one in four, that's a lot, um, of women online. So I think sexual harassment and that, again, we tend to turn a blind eye to it. Um, it's just because it's a part of our everyday lives. It's, it's on TV, it's in the news, um, it's in movies. Um, it's presented as being humorous a lot. Um, so I think for me, that one I find most offensive, the, like the object, you know, but, um, and the society as a whole, because it kind of, if it keeps going, that, doesn't say much about equality and how people truly feel about it. So I'm, um, I, you know, I have like a kind of a three strike role. I'm not a violent person. I'm definitely falling the, I'm a lover, not a fighter category, even though I played hockey and I'm uh, more in that boat of, um, yeah, but I have kind of like a three thing that always, you know, like, you know, if you, if you pick on, if you pick on my family, um, if you uh, use your power position to pick on somebody or you hit a woman or uh, attack a woman are my three things that have got me suspended from school throughout my life, um, have got me uh, to have some fun times in court cases where I probably needed Mitch Jackson uh, to help me out of uh, some binds. But, you know, I think ultimately for me, the, the reason I love Blab, and this is something that I really love in a sense of, you know, acknowledging a, a troll is oftentimes the, the the goal of the troll. They want they want to they want to they would just want to be noticed. They 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 are um, self absorbed egotistical cowards, and I and I say that I I'm not afraid to say that. But I think ultimately there's a there's kind of this weird part where the troll because they have the power to hide behind their key that, that someone can. Attack. And I mean, I'm talking attack in a sense of going way beyond what they would ever do face to face with any human being, even though they're bigger in in statue and they could probably beat up in all intents and purposes. But I would say one of the things for me is really, I love Blab because I feel like I can, I, when someone trolls in here, I invite them into the seats, right? I say, you know, if there's something to say before I block you, free to take a seat, come on camera. And right now, they've only been taken up by one person. And of course, they're hiding behind a, a man uh, where they had like a, a graphic in, on their screen. They didn't have them themselves. I deleted, blocked, moved on, didn't bother me. So for me, I think, I guess the type of harassment that was really to me is most offensive is the one where really someone believes because other people are doing it, it's okay. And that sounds kind of grandizing, but I mean, I, I, it's that whole, and actually Mitch Jackson and I were talking about this at the Periscope Summit. It's the whole fraternity aspect. I played in a fraternity, I'm a hockey guy. If everyone in the locker room is picking on one person or doing something, that other person or other people, you know, automatically feel it because the majority of the group is doing it. It is okay, and that to me is, I mean, it's a root of all evil. I've, I will fight by myself in something that I believe in, and it doesn't matter how many people are on the opposite side of the fence. And I guess it, it's just, it's an interesting conversation because I think most offensive is usually relative to your, you know, your background. You know, me having three daughters, the idea of you know attacking women is something that you know makes my skin crawl, but. I also probably realized that if I had three sons, I would still be offended by someone going after you know a, a female. But I think there's some really interesting uh, conversations going on. Yeah, I love that Mitch keeps going back to a violation of terms of service because I think that's kind of um, you can't disagree with that. <laughs> All networks, you know, if you read that fine print, they have outlined um, the behavior that they're hoping to see. Um, so. At the end of the day, and I'm excited for Mitch to come on in a couple of weeks and really dive deeper into the more of the criminal and legal action side of online harassment. So for me, I think, you know, one of the things I also I'm, I'm reading here on the side, you know, the terms of service view being you know really important. But also, you know, there's an element here where, you know, uh, I love that, you know, Mitch Jackson have a, the police officers in, right? And there's a, there's a, also this element of people saying, um, if, if, the police aren't stepping in, or if this isn't something that is breaking a law, um, that it's um, that it's not for me to worry about. And I don't know if anybody saw my Facebook post yesterday, but I had an awkward situation where I, I had to try to decide if I was if I need to mind my own business or I need to stand up and make something happen. And I wasn't doing it to be noticed for doing it, but it was a very tough decision for me because I took a picture 
of a situation that I was not okay with. I wrote down the license plate number um, and I crafted the tweet and I stared at it and I stared at it and I said, what, what, am I, what is my ultimate goal here? What am I trying to do? Am I trying to, to drive awareness? Am I trying to be like a, a hero for Brian's sake? I just want it to be like you know, a, a humble brag or am I doing it because I don't believe that this is good and it, for the greater good could really harm a lot of people. And it was, it was something I, I struggled with and I, and I can tell you it was, it was something that I stared at. I, as soon as I set, sent the tweet, I decided I was gonna be very transparent and I was gonna post on my Facebook and say, can you all give me your, this is something good that I should have done, shouldn't have done, should I have handled it a different way? But I think also when it comes down to online harassment, it doesn't really matter what the mass think. It really is how you, what you believe, the greater impact. And if it's going to affect more people and it's going to take advantage of people and, and could hurt them in a way, I still believe that you have to do the right thing, even when sometimes it might come across as a, as just a, you know, you sticking your nose in other people's business because that is a tough gray area. I mean, I, I battled it with it. No, I agree. And I, I definitely support your decision to, I saw the tweet first before I saw the Facebook post. And I would like to think that I would have done the same thing. Um, I was really impressed that Uber responded uh, first to me, know what it's about. Um, Uber responded right away, um, which is awesome that they're out there listening because again, it's, it's setting a precedent. And if you see that behavior and you turn a blind eye, then that guy is going to just keep doing it. He's going to encourage other drivers to do the same thing. And then it just becomes a snowball effect. Um, when one person sending one tweet could change the course of that path. So I'm always an advocate for speaking up wherever possible. Well, anyone, and I tell you what, there's another element here of like this public idea, right? And sharing it in public. And I, you know, I'm a huge fan of celebrating your wins and rallying together. But really when I was, when I was writing that Facebook post, and I'm using this as an example because it just happened to strike me. Um, I started trying to think like, why am I sharing this? Where is this going? And I ultimately thought that if one other person was put in a situation, it was even a step worse, that they would remember what the, the, the situation where I was, it was, and for those that I see there's some people that didn't know the backstory, it was someone leveraging um, the comfort and re the, um, I guess the security of Uber, having the Uber sign in their car, having an Uber sticker and holding up their Uber sign, um, standing outside the airport here in JFK. And then when someone went up there and said, hey, I wanna get in your car, they would wait till the luggage got in there and say, oh, I'm not gonna let you use the app. I have to do this off record, get in the car, I'll give you a set fee. And to me, when I did it, because I, I, I called an Uber, I walked up to him and when he told me that, I'm like, get out of here. And then I watched him do it. So two more people, they kind of were with it. Unfortunately, there was a, a, a older lady that got kind of taken advantage of it. But she was already had her luggage in there was getting in the car and then he guilt tripped her like oh you gotta be kidding me lady you've already you know, and i was and it, it infused me but part of it was like well how do we help stop these kind of situations for happening i love uber and you know and for me there's a little bit of element like if this kind of thing happens and maybe it gets nothing happens right maybe she got a cheaper ride and i was the the idiot for ruining it in that sense but you know i stepped right in i looked at her and say hey don't worry about him he's the guy violating the, the rule use the app, it's something easier to do, right? And that's that's not really the online harassment element, but I think what I wanted to kind of tell people is what I kind of feel like if we can help each other by really calling out what the action is you took, I believe that is how you inspire other people to take actions. And it is a weird piece of it for sure. Yeah, no, I think people seeing you do that will inspire other people to do the same. I mean, not just in regards to Uber, but in other similar situations where it really is as simple as sending a tweet to a company online to alert them that you know their brand is being misused um, and then again for for me for as you know a woman it's a safety aspect because that driver clearly not an actual uber guy <laughs> if he's just holding up a sign because you know when you use the app you get a picture of the guy's face and we all know not to get in the car if the guy doesn't look like the guy um, on the app um, you're just getting in a car with a stranger and um, I don't think any parent, friend, colleague would suggest that you do that. I agree completely. So, um, so there, you know, I think there's also other things where, you know, um, you know, I think this is something that as a male, for those that are out there listening, you know, um, I, I overheard somebody, I'm not gonna repeat their name because the name doesn't matter, but I overheard someone saying, you know, they, they heard about people, women getting attacked, right? And, and, and having to deal with a lot of harassment. And they, they used the sentence, and this was their reply, and it was genuine, and, it, and he was not trying to be, um, you know, uh, make funny or anything, but he said, well, I have people that call me greedy too. I'm harassed as well. And I think understanding the levels of harassment and understanding the difference between someone saying, you know, trolling you on your device and saying, hey, I got your address. I'm going to come rape your mother. 
and then someone calling you greedy are two different levels of of harassment and and for us to not understand either the levels but also understand that there is a difference and there is also a difference on how you handle them right there's almost a difference on 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 the side but I don't think either one is okay or has a place in this world, right? But there, there, there's, there's ones where you're saying like, hey, that's just people being people. Um, I hate the, um, the term when someone says, hey, that's just guys being guys because I don't believe guys being guys or girls being girls is an excuse to do anything that is negative, negative or to break down someone or to attack someone physically or um, verbally. But it is something that we have to be aware of because there is a level of it and there is a level of it that also kind of proactively determines how you react. And I, I think that's what we're going to get to later on this month is kind of how we go on before that. So I, I think um, I think we'll probably you know jump into question three and see how where we can go from this. But I, I just want to kind of put that out there as well. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, both of those are examples of online harassment. Obviously, one falls more into the criminal side that, you know, um, should perhaps be pursued. Um, and then the other is just more of that annoying nuisance trolling aspect but again it's still harassment and it's not right <laughs> so um i would speak up in either situation um which is a great segue to question three um there are a lot of really useful articles online about how to best combat trolls and humor is often uh mentioned as a best tactic to kind of stifle them or confuse the troll um, so question three is what role does humor play in the war against trolls? So this is an interesting one. So humor is an interesting uh, conversation because I think we are just talking about the different, oops, sorry. We are just, I talk with my hands too much, jeez. Um, we were just talking about the different levels of trolls, but I also think the medium and the platform um, and also your ability to handle um, the negativity. Like, I don't ever believe, in my opinion, that there is, just like I don't believe if someone tells me that there's one way to use Twitter, I also don't believe there's one way to handle a troll. I think it's a very, um, it's audience focused, it's individual focused. Um, I do believe that c as a community, we can help each other learn about that and how are our best ways to handle it. You know, I, I watch a lot of people get completely thrown off their game. You know, it's like a comedian, right? A comedian that's getting heckled from the front row, eventually figure out either their best, their best stance is to call them out and, and, and embarrass them. <laughs> Right, because that's that's their way of doing it, or their best way is ignoring it, or the best way is calling attention to maybe the house staff and say, "Could you please remove that?" So he's not taking away from the the experience of the rest of my you know my paid audience. And I I think humor is an interesting part because I think what humor does, in my opinion, I, I haven't done the research as you have, Rachel, and I would love to hear your thoughts. Humor actually, in my opinion, allows you to empower the community to laugh at this person without you having to call that person's name out like you know, like and that to me is you know I I, I work really hard I, for me as a, as a male I focus on like a three strike rule right I'm always like three strikes is what I is I, I work really hard um, to kind of work at but ultimately I, I think it really does depend on the person but I would love to hear some of the examples or some of those ideas that you a lot of them were to do with brands um, and seeing how larger brands will effectively you know I guess take away the anger element from a troll by kind of making light of the situation or just admitting that, you know, they did make an error or whatever happened to be um, at the root cause. Um, but it is difficult. I know, especially with live streaming, I know I've been caught off guard with some comments um, in our show and you never know what to do. Like, it seems like super easy. To, we'll just call them out. But that's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for me. It's embarrassing for the person um, if they're not just like a random troll. Um, cause you know, people do have their moments. Um, everybody, uh, gets a little trolly every once in a while. Um, and there's a difference between stating your opinion and being a little bit malicious. So I think, you know, always think before you tweet or comment in a forum or in a situation of a blab like this. Um, but I can, yeah, I can pull up the actual, um, let me go to my doc to find an actual example that we can discuss. Um, but yeah, I think big brands do do it well. Um, and they kind of have their large size of, to back them up. It's easier for them to take a stand against one person versus, you know, one one person taking a stand against another who might actually have a bigger community or network than they do. I think that's where it gets a little bit intimidating. Yeah, and in the live streaming space, for those that don't know, like, you know, I was at this panel, uh, Mitch Jackson was there as well, some of the people that are in the 
the stream, you know, and there was women that were on this panel and they had different backgrounds, different demographics. But um, a lot of the women that at this panel, what they were telling us was they, you know, they have to point the camera towards a wall for the first five minutes of their live stream because of the amount of hate and negativity that comes in. And, and for a while, they blocked everybody right out the gate. But because that really took away and there was so much effort, they kind of took, they took like a different approach to it. And I actually thought it was interesting because now what they also do later on, they actually add the humor and go, well, I don't know, community, do you guys want me to point it towards the wall again? And of course, everyone's like, no, and they rally. You know, and so there's you know, a little bit of humor in there. And I would also funny for me, like I grew up, my dad was very much the side where I'm a trash talker, I'm a very verbal shocker on the sport field but I was also one that I never asked when I was winning or, or leading and if someone was really getting in my face and trying to throw me off my game I always pointed to the scoreboard and I killed them with kindness by smiling at them you know I, even though I was always you know there, there's a meme out there somewhere of me blowing kisses to their team because I every time I was usually the you know the guy that would kind of stir things up and my, my reply back was just blowing kisses hey hey I love you guys too and it kind of plays into that hug your haters element of our friend Jay Bear who was you know in the show as well where there is an element where not only trolls, but I think there's this idea of hate and people that are don't understand it, where when you kill them with kindness, sometimes it re they recognize and they do their own self-awareness. And I know, Rachel, you also do a pretty good job of kind of like blocking or reaching out to somebody and saying, hey, you're doing this wrong. Was that your intention? And, you know, and giving them the benefit of the doubt, I am an internal optimist. So I always almost give people the, uh, the benefit of the doubt. I have a three strike rule. You know, do it once. I'm not going to acknowledge you. Do it twice. I kind of call you out without ever saying your name. The third time you're blocking, you don't, you're not going to bother me. You're not ruining my day. It's never, it's literally no skin off my back. But I know other people, because of the volume and the, their own stance of it, it's a one strike rule. And I don't blame them for that. But I think the humor element is actually a way to actually kind of mitigate it before you get to that first one, before you take it further. I mean, I've, I've seen like Southwest Airlines does some funny ones, like, you know, and they, and they, they kind of challenge back on Twitter, like, Oh my goodness, have you ever flown on an airplane before? If so, that's probably just the, you know, like, and they, and they really kind of take an angle where they know that the second time the person says something and it's still hateful, they can block them without thinking that the person mistrued or, you know, that stupid thing that I hate it, it drives me crazy on Periscope. When I call somebody out and they go, oh my goodness, I mistyped, it was spell check. I'm like, well, I, I couldn't tell you the range of words that you could have got that ended up with that sentence. <laughs> like, screw you, it's not mistyping. You're not only are you a coward, but now you can't even own up the fact that you were a coward. So um, I, you know, for me, I, I think the humor is a great question. So I, yeah, I think humor is a solid tactic. And I just dropped a link in from um, one of our friends at Social Media Examiner have a, a great post that they've uh, screenshotted some cool tweet examples of people effectively being funny to shoot people, shut people down, not shoot them. Um, but for me, at the end of the day, um, and why I think I respond to more tweets and DMs than I probably should, is that I truly believe that what you allow will continue. So me blocking someone because I found their tweet to be offensive doesn't change anything. They'll just keep doing it. So I think if you take that 30 seconds and you write back, and if they choose to have a conversation with you or not, at least you let them know that what they did was not appropriate behavior. And I think in some way, maybe they'll remember that. And maybe they'll, you know, in my hippy dippy happy world, um, maybe they'll think twice before doing it again. Um, well, and I think, you know, there's some conversation going on on both Twitter and the comments here. There is definitely a difference between a disagreement, a debate, and then hate. And I think even hate and trolls, right? We have, there, there's, a, there's a level there. And understanding that someone has a differing opinion of you to me is, is the, the power of the, of the world that we live in, the ability to collaborate, but also surround ourselves that are not a whole bunch of yes men or yes women. And I think ultimately understanding that difference is something that we're hoping that this month also kind of uh, educates because I'm a big fan on, I mean, I, there is nothing I love more than an educated debate. And when I explain educated debate, I think of it as someone that is willing to understand both sides of the argument, although being passionate about their one side and not have to degrade or break someone down to prove their own point. And it's not an easy skill, and depending on your, your piece, it depends, you know, it's why everyone says I don't talk about religion and politics, because there's a lot of people that, a majority of people cannot have an educated debate about those topics. They know one thing, they believe only in that one thing, they haven't taken the time to learn anything but that one thing, therefore their argument is always 100% from the one thing and everybody else is wrong. Um, I take the stance very much in religion and politics that I don't know what I don't know, and I don't believe that what I know is right unless I know everything that I don't know. So just kind of keep that in mind, and, and I think from Troll's perspective, that is the same. But you also have the option in a debate or a discussion or someone that disagrees with you to unfollow and block them. And I don't think less of you as well, because I think that's something that I think, unfortunately, 
people are like, oh my God, you, you blocked me and all I did was disagreeing you. Oh, well, because I was tired of dealing with you. Or I didn't believe that this was making me more productive and it wasn't wasting my time. That's the power we have. And I think, I think breaking somebody down because they decided to eject from a conversation or to back out of something because there was a disagreement doesn't mean they hate trolls or they don't understand that you were disagreeing. It's just their own value of how they're kind of handling it. Yeah, no, I agree. Actually, I have an example from an article I shared yesterday on Twitter, and I got a lot of people read it. They commented back saying that they disagreed, which is awesome. You can have a great conversation with people who don't agree with you. And then I had one person write back and just say, well, that's stupid. And I was like, what? what's stupid? So I looked at their account, and they had replied to four or five different people saying not the same thing, but effectively just letting everybody know that they were stupid. And so I wanted to write back and be like, you're stupid. <laughs> um, but I didn't because again, like how you respond reflects on, you know, how you want to be portrayed online. So I chose in that circumstance to just unfollow. Um, so I won't see their feed anymore, but um, I really wanted to write back, <laughs> but I didn't want to be a troll. So, <laughs> so um, Nat Natalie wrote here on the comment section and those that are watching, thank you guys for watching. As always, use the hashtag SBizHour on Twitter. Uh, you can engage in the comments. You know, and if you use slash Q um, in the comment section, it'll actually prompt as a question. We can see it on our side. And she actually asked, "Do you run into many trolls?" Um, and Rachel, I mean, you want to, I mean, address that from your side. Do you run into many trolls on your side? Yeah, um, and more so um, the last couple years. I think obviously the size of your network. Um, the more people you follow on Twitter, uh, the more people you let into your world, whether you have a, a you know, a public Snapchat or Instagram, um, you, you're kind of, you know, you're sharing your life with the world. So you are opening yourself up to that in a way. But again, that doesn't mean that um, it's your fault <laughs> that people are, you know, throwing negative feedback your way. Um, but yes, I would say the last couple years for sure. Um, at least one or two a day, I would say, which, you know, given the size of my network is perhaps not that bad, but it is a daily occurrence. I would argue that's one or two per day too many um, in the sense of that's, um, and, and, and I think, you know, for me, I, and I, I don't know if everybody knows, there, you know, I, um, for me, trolls and hate and disagreement, you know, it's that whole idea that if you're not, you can't make everybody happy and you're gonna have people that disagree with you. Um, I, I am one that believe in disruption and change, not for change's sake, but to drive an, um, an agenda and agreement. Um, I can tell you, I had lots of people that disagreed, that um, that really went out of their way to not only disagree with what I was doing, but really present their own opinion, probably usually um, for their own uh, objective or motive. Um, I will say over the last two years, the difference between those people that were challenging me, oftentimes not in an educated debate, but challenging me um, because they didn't want to, they didn't want me to drive change or what happened, that has turned into hate and spitefulness and attacking me, my family, people I work with, um, and, and really mainly a majority of what, what I've realized for me is that uh, the trolls, for the most part, don't challenge me individually a lot. But I will openly admit that they challenge and they go after my community, knowing that actually hurts me more. And, and to put that in perspective, you know, to me, you challenge me, you go after me, I know and can control what the variable is in my own self. I am very confident in the sense of knowing what I, I can do. Um, I am one that I am very protective of those close to me, those that I believe are, are making a difference. So I have actually been subject to a lot of people that took the route and said, I'm not going to go after Brian for whatever reason. I, I, I don't want that backlash. But I'm going to go against a lot of his people in his community because that's my way of attacking him. And it has been something that as soon as that happened, I started to recognize it. It happened more and more every single day, every single week. Um, and so I think that's also something kind of to, uh, to, to look at across the, um, the, across the board. So we have two interesting questions. Um, the first is from uh, Mitch Jackson. He is asking, have either of you ever come face to face with a troll? If so, how did you handle it? Um, and I have an experience from I, what I call a prior life when I wasn't uh, doing marketing. I was in more of the retail sales um, and the person had been commenting on our site and then happened to come into the store. Um, and they were very nice. And I had to really suck it up and be nice back, um, <laughs> pretend that I didn't know who they were. That's how I chose to deal with it at the time. Um, now I may handle it differently, but um, I was much younger then. <laughs> Brian, have you had any experiences like that? I have. Um, you know, and for me, I, I'm I'm one of the um, the. It's a I, it's a tough position that I always try to take. 
um, the bigger role and whatever you want to make that for. Um, and so for me, I've actually, I'm much in the sense of like uh, almost allowing it in, in, a, in a public space. So I had someone come to an event where I was speaking at when I was, it was a technology uh, event about three years ago. And then our entire goal was to sit in the audience and really heckle and challenge and really just disrupt and um, you know shortcome what Brian was doing. Um, and, and face to face, it was a very interesting discussion because for me, I have no problem seeing what's on my mind, no problem putting them in place. Um, the interesting part came when then, and I think, and this isn't a male thing, it's, it happens, um, was when it, when it looked like it was going to turn to violence, right? And the idea the, with that person was so adamant on disrupting what I was doing, they wanted to confront me and fisticuffs. Um, and to me, then, then understanding the difference between what was I going to get out of it and was this worth, um, was this worth happening? I will admit that um, I've made the wrong decision in that um, uh, essence. And I don't think there's always a right or wrong in what you're doing there, but um, I have made the wrong decision. And um, ultimately um, I felt like the wrong decision ended up with the right result. So I will give you that in a sense of um, what ultimately led from there. But it, it's a great question though. I, 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 it's, it's interesting when someone, I think with live streaming, it's really interesting because people see your reaction on video. And so when you're able to troll someone and get a direct reaction, the reason Twitter I believe trolling is always you know something that existed, but it's not out in the open. It's because the reaction is actually has to be something you're doing physically typing back to them. And you're probably not even seeing it in real time unless you're staring at tweet deck. In live stream, that happens and you're reading the comments. That's the whole power of Periscope, Meerkat, and Blab. So when it happens, they're getting what they want out of it. If you like it or not, you don't have to type in the comments because you're reading it and however you're ha handling it. And I think that's the scary part on that. So I actually think of people coming face to face with it actually happens on live stream. And I can tell you it happened to me today, this morning on a live stream of someone really, really going out of their way and knowing that I was reading every single comment. And when I got to their comment, they knew when I went to, I read the, I read the first two words and then I went to the next comment. And I didn't even acknowledge, I went on to the, the next one, but they knew from seeing how I kind of reacted. So it's, 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 it's an interesting discussion for sure. All right, the next one um, was asked by Hannah B. And she's asking, does being an opinionated woman on social media make you a target? So I want to um, answer that. <laughs> and I'll throw that out to anybody, because I think anybody in, on social with an opinion could be a target. Um, for me, um, I'm proud to be an opinionated woman, and it has brought way more positivity and work my way uh, in my life um, than not. So I will suck up those one or two trolls and continue conversations like these to hopefully get that down to maybe one a day instead of two. Um, but I can't really say either way if it's it's made me a target or it just, you know, it is what it is. Well, I think that kind of comes with you know the whole public, um, the public figure aspect, right? The more the more public facing you are, even if you're a politician or a celebrity, the the more visibility and the more influence, the more awareness you create yourself. Therefore, a hater has more to gain going after you, the opinionated. And, you know, and I think oftentimes, and this is something that I think is really bad, is that celebrities and 15 minutes of fame. The reason that a celebrities and a lot of pro football players and pro sports players um, are not on Twitter is because their agents don't trust them to actually be smart and handle stuff the right way. They unfortunately have not been trained or have not been built. I think being opinionated with a strategy and a goal like you do, Rachel, I think ultimately you are, you're building that rapport and you're also building that how you're going to handle it because you have success in mind. So I think the, actually the challenge to that is like, if you have 15 minutes of fame or you lucked in your position or you won the lottery, that fame and that um, visibility comes with a lot of scrutiny and haters and trolls and, and because because of that, you probably aren't aware because you weren't building it up. It wasn't something you were working towards. It happens overnight. I think that is really the ones that probably need the education the most because I feel you feel for those people. And like when you hear stories of people that wish they never won the lottery because of the amount of crazy things that come at them, to me, that's like, what is this world coming to? That that's how we treat people that were able to, that we rewarded for being lucky or whatever it was. And and honestly, that, that I think that's a I mean, it's an interesting piece to go with it for sure. Completely agree. So we have a question. I'm actually curious to hear your answer for Brian. It's because it's regarding Periscope. Um, Alex Young is asking, um, what are your opinions on the limit comments to only your followers feature on Periscope? So um, 
so this is where it goes into me. I believe there's a PG-13 button that needs to be added to Periscope next to the limited comment section. And the PG-13 button would actually allow me as the streamer to actually dictate what that is, right? And so the limit to commenters, I think eliminates a major benefit of the power of the live streaming Periscope platform, which is really connecting with the community and empowering everybody to have a voice. Therefore, limiting comments ultimately is taking one away one of the major features. I will caveat that with is my friend Vincenzo Landino and I were running the Applebee's account and we did not limit uh, comments. It was something, a discussion we had with the brand. Um, we convinced them that it was something we could handle and we did not want to happen. Um, then there was someone that created 31 different accounts on Twitter that we, we would block them and then they would come back in and add the N word uh, 300 times and cover my entire screen until we could block them again. And they did it 31 times, um, 31 different times. So I believe then the onus falls on Twitter that we should not allow people to create Twitter accounts and log into Periscope with minutes after that account actually is created. I believe, you know, it's a gun rule. Give them 24 hours like to eliminate that side. But I will tell you, going back to Applebee's afterwards and saying, hey, you know, this is what happened. Not once did they say limiting comments would have been the answer because of ultimately the conversation and the risk first reward, the reward of a global conversation of people that were not limited outweighed the few hate and therefore they we weren't letting them win so i look at it as hey let me control not just the commenters but let me control the words maybe even the countries or maybe the, the type of profile that someone is you know the countries would be an interesting one the politics on you know on twitter Um, allows you to kind of he is way, way too much to think that saying that so, uh, I think we're losing brain. you brain welcome Dave I'm assuming you're the Dave part <laughs> <laughs> I am the Dave part thanks for Chuck <laughs> thanks for joining in <laughs> for having me so no really interesting conversation because it does tie in with uh, what I'm all about, um, which I, uh, I've been teaching self-defense and martial arts for so many years. So that's dealing with trolls and haters in the real world. Um, here on, on Periscope, and so it, it's amazing with just a, a simple double click is a way to deal with, with, with it really comes down to it, to a way to deal with a, a troll um, is simple. Two clicks by one finger so it's pretty it's a lot more simple to do it in this virtual world um sometimes the trolls i've found i've actually enjoyed them um kind of turned the dogs like had had fun with them until i wanted to do the double click and got rid of them so if they could if i could use them in a way because their idiotic response is so stupid that my followers can find some humor out of it and not only their their ignorance will also um, even shine light on what I was teaching was even was even more proper. So sometimes I even use them in that way until they don't know they no longer serve my, my purpose, and I double click them away. Are there any skills that you've learned with dealing with online trolls that you can apply to advising people how to handle trolls in real life? Yes, the fact is they wouldn't do that in real life. If you just keep that in your mind that these people are really coward, it's really easy. If I turn off this light and I, I hide, I'm a, I'm a different person. But am I here and you see my face and you see what I'm, 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 I'm a real person? People are cowards in that. And, then, and they really are the epitome of cowards. They, won't, they wouldn't do that to me in real life. They, they would see my energy. They would see how I present myself. They would see, I'll go as far as maybe, you know, oh, that guy's an alpha male. I wouldn't say that to him, you know. But in in this world where they can go hmm, i could just say whatever i want well they're they're cowards and and just knowing that that's that's the type of person they are they're they haters and trolls are losers by definition they're pushing against things they're hating things fine live that world you're the losers I, that doesn't so I, I just want other people to realize that they don't have to affect you they just don't have to affect you this is simple in this virtual world be be glad if it happens in this virtual world Double click. Bye bye. And on that note, I've also found so I have had some email trolls, uh, some online harassment that comes my way in email form, and those folks aren't terribly slick. Um, and I think it's just the caliber, perhaps the trolls that I attract. 
<laughs> it's super easy to do an IP trace and find that you're like, well, I think I know about four people in that area. So let me pin it down real quick. Um, and it makes you chuckle because you're like, you're such an idiot. <laughs> well, you know, I, and uh, you guys hear me now, right? I'm back. Yeah, hey, you're back. Dave, thanks. I want to say shout out to you. I, I really appreciate your guys' support and everything I do. You guys share and come at my Periscopes all the time. It adds amazing value and is really part of the reason I do what I do. Um, thanks, but I wanted, I wanted to kind of address one little thing. Is like I, I you know, I believe you know, part of what you're saying, Dave. I, I understand, but I also think there's an element where you know people tell you just block them, turn the, tune them out. And you know, I went through a really awkward situation where I blocked and tuned someone out. Um, they still didn't go away. Um, they turned it from you know like publicly posting on social to going after my work life and my balance. And then they took it to another level and show up at an event, right? And it escalated very quickly. And I was talking to Tasman, who's a Periscoper here, and she had people show up at her house that found her on Periscope and, and were originally harassing her, were blocked, created on numerous accounts, found out her address, and then, then showed up in real life to take it to the next level. So I will, I agree with you as a, as a whole, people aren't going to do that, that level of it, but the, there is some of those people where, my first answer was like, call the police. I mean, that that is that, that escalation is leading to psychosis and, and a whole different. So we have a question that just came through from Natalie, and she's asking, do you believe what the trolls are saying? Because if you do, that's what hurts you. They can't hurt you. And I think I, I completely agree. But in a very social world, People that don't know you may believe it. So there's repercussions of people seeing that about you online and it can affect your business long term. So, well, I agree that when I see something that I've gotten, you know, via Twitter or an email, it makes me feel sad for a little while and then I get mad and then I delete it and it goes away. But I'm more concerned about is that the general consensus? Is that the sentiment of people in my community? Um, and that's what concerns me the most. So that's where I get so fired up about that kind of behavior. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how everybody has a different perspective on how, how to handle this, this situation? And, you know, you look at what our person, our individual personalities are. Dave, I totally get where you're coming from. And I don't disagree with anything you've just said. Uh, Brian, being stalked, having someone physically show up at an event. You know, you and I, I mean, we've talked about this. I, it would be, we'd have each other's back. We'd drop gloves and take care of it when nobody else is watching. And uh, the lawyer and me would keep either one of us from going to jail. Okay, I get all that. And Rachel, I can't believe you're not responding to my emails. Come on. No. <laughs> but here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you look over at the comments, there's so much conversation about, you know, what is the troll saying? Does he or she have a constitutional right? Are they violating the TOS? There's so much gray area that, Dave, by allowing them to remain on your show so that you can use them on your terms and make fun of them and then boot them when you're ready. And that's pretty, you know, I get that. The problem is that might actually encourage some trolls to get more attention by doing that on the next show. I mean, it depends on the personality of the troll. And I think rather to eliminate any chance of that happening, somebody showing up at Brian's house or Rachel's house or even your house, Dave, although it sounds like you've got things under control, that would be the biggest mistake a troll ever made. Um, <laughs> I, I'm all in favor of a zero tolerance. In other words, rather than engaging these idiots, and there's a difference between a troll and somebody that's sharing an opinion or having a debate or a discussion. When I think of a troll, I'm thinking of somebody that's purposely trying to harm a program, whether it's you know, in an insignificant way or in a criminal way. There's wrongdoing there. And I think rather than eliminating any misunderstandings or encouraging these trolls to take any additional steps with other victims, zero tolerance just shut them out screenshot it do all the things we'll talk about in a couple of weeks on on another show and um, by having a zero tolerance you're eliminating any possibility of any of the above happening i mean Can i don't I know quick, quickly, mitch you're absolutely right i just noticed uh, my partner dina must be at work and she's uh she's time chimed in this as well no i normally do block them right away but it's only if, if they say something that's just really quick and i can use it just for a quick second before i send them goodbye i really don't engage too long because it just it's going to distract it's like me running my martial arts school and someone just walking in going hey i want to talk to me like uh no this is my classroom that's the door you didn't bow get the hell out so i'm just saying that right. if they say something it just reinforces my 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 my, my point then I will, uh, well, I will use them, but don't, I, I, I didn't want to miss, miss, uh, make it seem like I would talk 
endless with them. I make it very short and then they're off. So, you know, I, I, I totally agree. One of the things on my side, you know, with Periscope is interesting, right? So Periscope, um, the community that's actually engaging the comment section has the ability to block somebody else that's commenting. And then, of course, the streamer has the ability to block someone that's commenting. So what uh, my role on my stream, me as the video or the streamer, I have a three-strike role. It's funny because I this morning I was in uh, Amanda Oleander's um, live stream and I blocked 47 people this morning. And, and that's in one stream, in a 30-minute stream. I have a one-strike rule when someone's attacking someone that is, you know, from a female and me as a, a commenter. So it's even also kind of interesting in that side of the fence because where I am in my own and I feel like I am able to not only control and know how it's going to affect me, I don't need to know if it affects them. I, in my own right, believe I no longer need to see their comments. And I need to help because if it does pop up and say, you know, I social fans block such and such, which to me then empowers us as the community which I think ultimately is what we were trying to really talk about here is that if we start telling people that we're not standing about this, Mitch, you and I had this talk like, hey, can we just put this all on a website or on an Excel document that shows anybody that we've ever blocked? Because all of a sudden if you realize three and 400, and you know what, Blab, shout out to Blab, and maybe you should have Furkan on here because I remember early days before we could block on uh, Blab, Furkan and, um, and Sean had a very strong opinion on they, why they were not allowing individuals to dictate someone being banned from the platform. And they wanted to have like kind of like a, a panel or a, a judging system on the Blab side where they said, hey, once someone's blocked, we're going to get a notification about it. And then we see someone blocked like 400 times or, you know, there's going to be some kind of parameter and all of a sudden they're, they're banned automatically. I actually love their view on it because just because someone – um, is, is blocking them individually doesn't mean ultimately everything they're doing is hate, but if the general population or there's a general theme, I think that's um, where it was. So I would love to, we might have to ping them on here, uh, Rachel. It just came to mind now because it was something that really blew my mind when there wasn't that function. When I started on Blab, I'm like, really? How is that not a function? But it made so much sense when they answered it that way. And now I think they're amazing job. I can say I had um, someone, uh, actually I think it was on uh, on was on the show that I was on a couple weeks ago with a oh, lady miss- going on and, and 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 there was lots of blocking lots of blocking but those per- people have never been back so I think that's a interesting one as but well. the difference though so on Periscope when you're blocking somebody you're blocking them from that specific stream right but on Blab when we block somebody that removes them from the platform so no so neither so neither one removes them from the platform what the well, Periscope- Blab, they go into like a judiciaries <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and, and what periscope does is actually blocks them from commenting on that existing stream and from commenting on your stream you as the person that's blocking them so if okay. you were blocking them as a commenter they can never comment on my own personal stream when i go live hey guys i'm going to bounce out in a second and open up the seat uh thanks for having me on you know it's interesting i mentioned earlier over in the comments i had uh, three police officers on and we were talking about something and we had trolls who were trolling in the comments during three LA police officers. And one of them handles the, uh, all the accounts for Los Angeles uh, Sheriff's Department, 27 different accounts. He's the cyber expert. And Brian, you guys should get together and meet because you have a lot in common. And he's, he's looking at me like, is this, is this guy kidding? I mean, we're running the numbers on him as we speak. And But that goes to show you, I mean, the IP address and things like that. That just goes to show you that Oftentimes, you're not dealing with someone that's thinking rationally. And it's probably best to just eliminate that person from your offline or online life as quickly as possible. And that would be my thoughts as as an attorney. Don't interact with these people because you don't really know who you're interacting with. And we'll just leave it at that. But I'm going to bounce out. You guys take care, okay, and have a good Monday. Thank you so much. much. You know, and I, and I always take a stance also, just for those that are listening, um, and hopefully you can hear me, the, the background noise. I'm going on stage in 15 minutes, um, and they're playing the intro stuff now. now. But I, one of the things I also do is um, for every troll or hater that comes in, and I have to block them or handle them, especially on live stream, I also celebrate somebody that's doing it right in the comments almost directly after. And it's something that I've always consciously done, is that when you celebrate the people that are doing it the right way and doing it well, all of a sudden people rally behind that way of doing it. So rather than me giving attention to that troll, after I block them, I say, hey, thank you, Dave and Deanna, that you guys are always supportive. Yeah, you, you rock. And I think to me what that ends up doing is it actually shows that you're rewarding good behavior, not just you know, not rewarding anyone at all and, and, you know, and the haters kind of getting a little bit of your attention. So maybe, it's, maybe that's something that we could even – I would love to kind of – other people take that approach because it's something that I always think feels that works because it kind of changes the, the tide. And that oftentimes is all it needs to mute the trolls. 100%. I, I totally remember you see, doing that a couple of times. You're totally known for that. Absolutely. I also want to say thanks to someone like a Dr. Jana because I follow her, her lines and I just 
it's great. I just block, block, block. I block the people. It's like, thank you. You bring, you bring out the, all the trolls. And, and, and she's great at doing it as well. But I got to say, because they're going to be showing up at one that's a sex, you know, sex doctor. They're probably going to show up at other people's that have anything around the sex in your title or what have you. They're going to look, they're going to troll someone else. So if she's gathering some, she's, I think she had, oh, that's quite a long time ago, like 200, 200 people blocked, but I think it's quite a bit more there than that. But I have to thank Dr. Jana for, because I follow her and I love her. I love her, uh, her broadcast, but I also use hers to also find the trolls and block them. Well, that is a super positive way to end our first show of the month. Um, We're going to be. We will be discussing online harassment all month long. Um, Next week, we have some cool guests lined up. Um, The week after that, bringing Mitch back on camera for a full hour. Um, Super excited. Thank you guys so much. Um, Together, we truly will be the change. Good luck on and your I, presentation. And I, 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 want to, I want a little bit of a challenge to everyone that's listening still. I challenge you between now, this Monday, and this show next Monday, I challenge you to celebrate a winner and help inspire somebody else that's getting trolled or something that's happened, and then bring that story back to us next, next Monday. Let, let's, let's celebrate the good things that we can do. If we all, there's 46 people, 272 people, plus all people watching the replays. I, wanna, I would love to hear success stories of you watching, a, you know, seeing someone on Twitter being attacked. Maybe it's a Facebook post and a comment and you, and you rally behind that person. Let's go out of our way to celebrate a winner and make the noise more about the winner and less about the trolls. And I think that is the start of this month. This was awesome. Rachel, thank you for doing all the research, putting it together. Kristen Curtis, you rock, my friend. You continue to do what you do. Guys, I love you. I will see you guys exactly this time next week. Uh, 15 minutes, check me out on Periscope. I'll be on stage talking about this crazy world of live stream. Cheers, all.